Hi, this is Chris Kellogg with 123 Muse, and we're going to show you how to build a, uh, or use a technique to make a frosted panel using whatever images you like and without using Photoshop in Muse. Let's take a look at the finished product. So we can see that we've got this nice background image here, and we can see the background image showing through um, this form here, and we have a little blur maker widget, and if we hit preview, you'll see that the box now frosts out, so it gives this frosted effect to the background image. And this is made up of a couple of different parts and then this little widget that applies to it as well. Now the main technique to understand is that we are using a background image here, but we've got to use it at its original dimensions because when we place the um, secondary image on the top, this panel here, we need to place it exactly on top so that the effect works. Now we can move the effect around and blur out different sections. Um, however, we need to um, make sure that these images are full dimensions. So for example, you couldn't use this technique with an image that's scaled to the width or scaled in height um, because it would uh, the, the placement of the image wouldn't match up. So this is a technique rather than just a widget that just solves this problem straight off. And the widget is really um, there to, uh, to allow this technique to happen. So let's start from scratch. I'm going to close this down. And while I'm closing this down and opening up a new window, just to, uh, just to show you, in the Blur Maker package, which is free if you're a 123 Muse member, you have our Blur Maker um, Muselib file, which includes the widget and some um, additional assets for testing it out. These uh, image asset backgrounds uh, for playing around with, and then the file that you've just seen, this Blur file, so that you can open it up and dissect it and learn it. So first of all, let's go ahead and create a new site. We'll just keep everything standard um, and then we'll just set our top margins to zero. We can leave everything else the same. There we go. And then let's just make sure, go into our master here. And let's just pop that to the top. Now, you don't have to do it this way. You don't have to set everything to zero. But for this particular instance, it's useful. You don't also have to have the um, blur frosted effect on a image at the top of the page. You could have it partly down the page, but again, in this particular tutorial, we're doing that just so that it makes it easy for us. Right, first of all, we want to add an image to the page. So let's go ahead and grab an image. So I'm gonna grab um, some assets here. I'm just, let's bring this image on here. And <clears throat> let's place it on the page. And you can see that this image is uh, we're using the full dimensions and it's jumping off the side of the page. So if we preview this in the browser, we'll see that as the browser scales, all that's happening is we're just revealing more of the image. So it's not scaling with the page, it's just a big wide image and it's revealing with the page. Now we can use this as a background image and we'll show you this at the end of the tutorial, but for now just place an image on the page, not as a background image to a rectangle, just on the page. And let's just make sure it's in the center and we've got that smart guide switched on there. Now we're going to create some layers to make our lives easier. We're going to create three layers and the first one we're going to call it background image. The next layer we will call the blur panel. And the last layer here we will call content. You can call them whatever you wish, but that makes it easy. Uh, we're just going to make sure that we have this on the correct layer. So when we select it, you can see here in our background image that the little blue icon is showing there, the little blue square to say that we're on that layer. And if we right click and said move to layer, we can see it's on the background image. Let's make sure that that's completely where we want it. So we'll select content area and we'll align it to the top and align it to the center. So everything's great. And what we'll do now, because it's in a layer, let's just lock that layer. We can switch it, its visibility on and off, but this allows us to lock it. Now, because it's locked, we can't select it and can't move it around. So that makes it useful when we're putting the page together. Let's just unlock it again. 
and we're going to duplicate this image. So we want another version of this image. So we can go to Object to Edit, sorry, and Duplicate, or we can just press Alt and drag, and we can uh, duplicate a new copy on the top. Let's use the duplicate, the Edit Duplicate uh, method because that puts, puts makes it nice and easy if you're not sure. Right, there we go. Okay, now, what we want to do now is put that in the blur panel because this is going to become our blur panel. So right click and move to layer, move to the blur panel. Let's lock that background panel down and we can see that the little square is lit up there and that's showing us that that image is selected in the blur panel. Now let's uh, zoom out a bit. Let's go to 50% here and selecting this image, we want to resize it to our panel size. Now, if we just grab a corner, just grab a handle and resize it, we can see that it scales proportionally, which is generally very useful in views. But what we want to do is we want to shift and resize. And what that allows us to do is to create the size that we want and it's not proportional. So we can see that our image is, um, is changing in, in size uh, in width and it's squishing the image down. So that's by pressing shift and grabbing the handles. So let's move that into place and let's, right, I think it was two. Let's take a look. Let me just take a look at my notes. Yeah, that, that'll do for the time being so that we can just see the effect. Okay, now if we preview this, you'll see that that is not what we are looking to achieve because this image is all squished. But what you'll see next is why we're using a placed image rather than a rectangle with a background fill. Now, when we, if we unlock this background image, we'll see that its dimensions are 2048 by 651. That's the original dimensions. If we double click on this image, we will see a uh, an image uh, area pop-up that allows us to move the original image around in the frame. So the um, the frame that we just created now becomes a clipping mask to that image. So it's cropping it. So if we now set that image back to 2048 by 651, we'll see that this image is now the same dimensions as the background image, um, but it's cropped within this frame. And just to prove that, if we select this, if we uh, select this image, um, let's select this background image here. I'm going to lock that panel. Again, why we use layers, it's useful to lock panels down and switch that off so we can't see it. And then this, this image here, I'm just going to drop the opacity down to, yeah, let's say there, that'll be fine for now. Switch this back on. Now we can see that this image, let's preview this. We can see that this image, the full opacity image, the fully opaque image, is um, displayed within the frame. So we've been able to create a kind of clipping mask by using the new dimensions of the image, but resetting the image within that image frame back to its original dimensions. So let's now uh, go and let's put our, let's select that and pop that back up to 100% and we'll lock that panel and unlock this one. So with that selected now, we're going to go to our graphic styles and let's create a new style whilst that panel's selected and we'll just call that blur. Okay, and now we're going to go to our library and go to our blur maker and grab the blur maker widget onto the page. Now the CSS ID here, what that's doing is that's matching whatever we put in the CSS ID here, we want to be the same in the graphic style because a graphic style just adds a class to whatever it's applied to. So by our graphic style being called blur and our widget using a CSS ID of blur, this CSS will now target this frame. So let's go ahead and change that to 10. There we go. 
And if we zoom back in and hit preview, and now we can see that that section of our image is now blurred. Now, what if we wanted to move this around? Could we do that? Well, yeah, it's very straightforward. So let's move this image over here. And we can see our smart guide there is telling us that it's moving um, it's moving proportionally. And then if we double click back into this, we can see that our background image is moved. So with uh, the hand tool within that frame, if we set that image back to here, now when we preview, now that section of the image is appearing is appearing blurred. So it's 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 a really easy technique, and once you get your head around how this works, it makes perfect sense. So we could move this down the page, for example. Let's just shift this down the page. Oh, we've got that locked, haven't we? Silly me. Go to our layers and unlock here we go and let's just shift that down the page and now when we preview we can see that everything is moved so we know that this technique is working but we want to complete this frosting effect so next what we want to do is we want to put a panel over the top of that to create the frosting effect now that we've this panel here is 294 by 383 so let's put a rectangle down and it was 294 by 383. 294 by 383. And we're going to move that over the top. And let's just let's just lock this background image there so we don't mess it about. And go to a line, line to selection, left and top. Now if we if we uh, make sure that this is now in the content area. So I'm going to select that item, right click, move to content, and let's lock our blur panel down because that's in the right place. Now we can just work on this. And I'm going to choose a blue and then knock it down to, let's say there. And then with the um, opacity slider, I'm just going to drop this down to, let's say there, let's try that. And when we preview now, so now we've got this nice frosting panel happening. Let's also apply a uh, glow effect. So we'll select glow, outer glow, and we're gonna use a darker color. So we create kind of a shadow. So if we choose, let's say, this purple color here, and we'll set that to maybe five. And let's just drop this down a bit. In fact, let's uh, zoom in a bit so we can see it. And then that's going to make that panel stand off from the page itself. So now we can really see our frosting panel coming together. And we're using the, we're using a slight blue tint to us to, to create a kind of a glass feel to it and the, the frosted, the etching, which is either um, with the acid etching, which this frosting looks like, it's either um, a just off green or just off uh, blue. So let's uh, try it with the green and then just bring it down to more of a, let's see, there we go, just off like that. And that creates that acid etch kind of feel to it. So now what we want to do is put some content on top of it. Well, we've actually created some content in the library, so that will speed up this particular tutorial. So let's grab this form here. And this form, uh, let's just pop that on top there. And we can resize this. So this has already got a panel uh, in it. So I'm just going to drag that over there and move this form in place. And if you take a look at the styles that we've applied to this form, we're using a background fill color, 21% opacity. And then we're using our glow, a darker glow, uh, an inner glow, 15% opacity. And let's preview that now. And there we go. So we have this nice frosted effect with the form that we can move to wherever we want. And the great thing as well is if we go in, we want to change the uh, image, the background image, we don't have to go and cycle through Photoshop and so on. If we go to our layers panel here, I'm going to unlock the blur panel and the background image. If I select the background image and go to um, right click, replace image, 
And then let's say, for instance, we want to choose this mountain landscape. We choose the mountain landscape there. And then in the blur panel, we'll select this background here. Make sure that we've got that selected. And then we will right click on the image itself. Let's just actually move it out a bit so that we can select it easier. And right click, replace image, choose that same I think it was the, uh, this one was it? Looks about right. Um, yeah, okay, and move that back into place there. And then maybe we want to change the, the background color here to be more representative of this. Go in there, change that, select that color. Uh, and let's try that again. There we go. Let's choose there. And then our inner glow, we'll choose uh, this a dark green here. And let's knock this up just slightly, bring this up. So, and then we'll just choose a one of these greens down here, and it'll select. And when we preview this now. So we've got that nice frosting effect now with this image um, and it was very easy to change. I'll just do it one more time. So I'm gonna right click on this image, replace image. Let's choose, uh, let's choose this nice, this one here. And this nice light leak here. And then uh, just move this image over, right click, replace image, choose that image there. These are all the same dimensions, obviously, and that's why it works. Um, let's change, oh, let's move this back. Let's choose, let's select one of these blues here. That's nice. Go in and select another blue. Fine. Change our glow to maybe this dark one over here. And then change our button color to this blue here. Yep, that'll do. And then if we preview this, so once again, we've got this nice frosting uh, effect. And you can play around with it. You can add multiple panels using the same technique. So let's just go ahead and try that out. If we just, if we make sure that our background image is locked here, and then we grab this entire panel move it over here. I'm going to take the form off this one. And we'll just, let's just take that off completely. Let's just move this out of the way. Double tap into this image here. And we just want to move this to align this back to where it was. There we go. And move this back in here. Now when we preview, We've got two frosted panels on the page and we're using the same techniques and it, it, it looks great. We could add more and so on and so forth. So you can see the technique. The main technique to remember is that we need to have two images on top of each other that have the, uh, that are in exactly the same place. Now let's take this image, this background image out and put in a full width rectangle we're still going to use the original size. Let's see what happens there. So if I lock these layers down, undo this here, and let's remove that. And we know that this was five, um, 651. So the height, I want to do 651. Let's pop it into, make sure it's aligned to content area, top left, and let's make it a full width panel and then uh, send it to the back. So we're going to move it to layer background panel. Yeah, that's fine. And we're going to use our fill, add image. There's our light leak image there. And let's just make sure that it's original size and it's in the center. Let's preview that now. 
and we can see that works fine. And if we preview this in the browser, we can see that we can resize the page here and we still have our frosting effect staying in place because the image is in the same place. So that is the technique for that we've come up with for creating these frosted panels and we encourage you to experiment with them, to play with them and see what you can com come up with. But we hope that you find this technique useful and that if you've been banging your head against the wall trying to figure out how to create these frosted panels, then here's a technique for you. Now, one caveat to it, um, this because this uses CSS filters, you may not be able to use this in older browsers. Um, we have a link on the page below where you can go and check which browsers support CSS filters. And the other thing to note is that this technique is really for only creating the frosted panels uh, in the foreground. You wouldn't necessarily be able to use this same widget to create a blurred um, background image. So this is quite specific to creating these frosted panels. But aside from that, we hope that you find this technique really easy and thanks for watching.